instead of trying to knock it out. Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So the uh, last speaker talked about what the government doesn't do, and I'm not going to talk about what we do do because we've done quite a bit in this field, interestingly. But what I want to talk about is why we have some challenges in New Zealand around the type of homes we have here. And if you look at the history of, uh, of homes in New Zealand, we've built homes out of wood uh, with very little inside them. In other words, you live in a house like mine where there's a bit of scrim stuck on a bit of wood inside the house, and it's a wooden house with a single pane window, and they give all sorts of trouble. And the reason they give trouble is because we've got such a varied climate in New Zealand. And if you look at housing stocks around the rest of the world, not many places in the rest of the world have used wood to build their houses. So, so we have some challenges in New Zealand around our housing stock, which many other countries don't have. And, and when they get to an age, uh, well, well, many of our wooden houses are in excess of 100 years old now in New Zealand, and many of the rental houses we're talking about in the course of this bill are over 100 years old. When they get to that stage, they're extremely difficult, particularly if they're low to the ground with a, narrow, uh, with a very small ceiling area, they're very difficult to change the structure of those houses and the nature of them. And, and so we do have some significant challenges in New Zealand around the type of housing stock that we've historically had here. Uh, and, and I think if you look at my own electorate, uh, you get to a place like Taumanui, where you have extremes of temperature, you have um, um, extremely cold in the winter, sometimes extraordinarily hot in the summer, and a lot of very old wooden houses, because Taumanui is one of those very early settled places in New Zealand, it is extremely difficult to get those houses and bring them up to scratch today. So one of the challenges we have, one of the challenges we, yeah, I, Christchurch, the, the great technology they used in Christchurch was pretty simple. If we could do that in Tamaru, it'd solve all our problems. Um, I, think, I think that the, um, the issue that we've got with the house in a place like that is how we bring them up to standard and bring them up to standard at a rate that that both the landlords can afford to do it at and that the tenants can then afford to rent them at, uh, at the same time. And I'm not making excuses for it, that's just how we are in New Zealand and it's different than the rest of the world. So there is some very big challenges in that area. So what then tends to happen as landlords do better, they sell those houses and upgrade their own stock. So rather than upgrading the house, they upgrade the stock. And by upgrading the, st uh, sure, the up upgrading the stock achieves the same thing, but they sell those houses to first home buyers. And so then the first home buyers have got effectively the same problem that the landlord had initially. And, and if you looked at the, um, the insulation um, um, program that we've had for the last six years running in New Zealand, some of those houses have been the beneficiaries of that and it's done a great job for New Zealand. So, so this is a vexing challenge for us in New Zealand, much more difficult, I think, than almost any other country in the world faces, and that's for the reasons I've outlined. So if you think about the context of this bill, th there's a proposal in this bill that there will be an inspectorate put in place to inspect those houses. And one of the problems that we have uh, with all government inspectorates is that they cost a whole lot of money. And if you think about the, pr the proposal that may be in place for this, that may be, because we don't know, and I'll get onto that in a minute, the proposal that may be in place to, to administer this bill could cost as much as $225 a house a year. And, and I don't know of any landlord who's going to carry that cost without passing it on. So straight away we have this large cost passed on to the tenants of those houses. And I think the other issue that we've got with these um, uh, inspectorates or with, with publicly owned or government owned or council owned housing for that matter, is they are never as well run as a privately owned operation. So, so once you put a regime in place to inspect those houses, they'll tend to be let go by the landlords, and that's effectively what will happen. And, and I take my own case, Mr Speaker, where, where um, the Manawatu District Council had a stock of 207 community houses, which they ran pretty badly, to be fair. They then put those houses into a trust. That trust was able to bring those houses up to speed and, and they are very pleasant places to live now. So the, the, so the community trust, which effectively is a community-owned organisation, has brought those houses up to speed and uh, by insulating them, by rebuilding them to some extent and using some money from outside of the system to upgrade those houses, they've done a great job of it. And so I think there's some challenges around the way we um, structure the ownership of some of these houses. And so, 
sure, this bill is designed to deal with tenanted houses, but it also deals with, with community housing, it will deal with government housing and all other types of housing that we put together. So it, it, um, it does create some challenges, and I, th I think that the moment you put an inspector in place, you've created a bureaucracy which creates a whole lot of problems of its own. So I want to talk um, a little bit about um, the need to have homes warm and dry, because clearly it's important that we do have warm, dry homes. But, but again, uh, as with many members' bills that come to this House, this bill doesn't lay out clearly the conditions on, on which it's anticipated this will be implemented. So there's no real um, guide for us when we discuss this bill as to how it will be implement, implemented in due course. And so, for example, there's a proposal that, that a house should be set at a certain temperature. And there's no way you're going to get a house to run at the same temperature in a place like Tamarinui as you are in a place like Hastings or somewhere else. It's almost impossible to do that. And of course, those people that live in those places are going to uh, rely on very or live in a very different environment and will consequently operate uh, at a very different temperature. So I think one of the difficulties that we face as a parliament with members' bills is that there's no clear guidance as to how those members' bills, or how it's anticipated those members' bills will be implemented. There's not, nor is there any clear guidance, or, or nor, I guess, has there been any clear consultation other than the opportunity to submit to the select committee process as to, how, as to what impact that might have on the total housing market, on the, on the um, tenancy agreements or on, on the rental property market throughout New Zealand. And I think that's quite a challenge for this House as well. And, and we've seen with a number of members' bills coming into Parliament in recent times where the, where the ability of, of the community to, to complement or, or to comment on the, the um, bill as it gets um, made up has a very big impact on what happens when the bill gets here because suddenly they're panicked into thinking, well, this is going to be implemented and how is it going to be implemented? And of course, no one really knows how it's going to be implemented when it comes to the House. And, and so I think the, these members' bills often create some very interesting uh, or, or difficult, I guess, challenges for Parliament. They also um, create some very difficult challenges for the government departments who have to then try and put together a set of regulations around how this might be implemented. And so whilst I um, um, congratulate um, the member on having his bill drawn, and this is the first opportunity I've had to look at this bill, well, have, not the first opportunity, but it's the first time I've had a look at this bill because clearly I wasn't part of the select committee process uh, that, that um, brought this bill to the House. But um, it, it does um, create a whole lot of challenges, I think, which are interesting for us to try and resolve. It creates some pretty big challenges for the government department that's got to implement uh, the bill and to get it in place. So, as I said, I didn't have the opportunity to, to um, listen to the submissions uh, or take part in the select committee process, and so it's a little difficult to comment on how we got to some of these um, um, or conclusions that have come back to the um, to the parliament. But, Mr. Speaker, I, I think um, there's merit in a lot of the proposals that come to the House and members' bills. There's merit in a lot of the proposals in this bill. But as has been said by earlier speakers on this side of the House, many of the issues that are touched on in this bill have already been touched on in the course of um, government legislation. Uh, and, um, and things like the Healthy Homes Initiative, which is, um, again, in my uh, part of New Zealand, has made quite a contribution to a large number of houses in a small town like Taumanui, where there's been help with um, upgrading the house, insulation and things like that. And uh, so it does a pretty good job. But, Mr Speaker, I can see why a bill like this would come to the House, but I can also see that the government's done a lot of work on getting this bill to the, or getting some of the issues raised in this bill to the point they have, and I can also see the difficulty in trying to implement uh, a bill like this without having had a very clear pathway and a very, uh, a, I guess, a good discussion amongst all those people who have gone um, down the path to implement the bill. So, Mr Speaker, um, uh, with all, all that, um, I'm, I've got to oppose the bill. So, thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the Green Party will support the health.